Good morning. Good morning. Let's call the June 26 Finance Committee meeting to order. And we'll start out with our monthly sales tax report. Looks good. Continues to come in. Last month was a bit of an anomaly, but. Yeah, we're 3.1% ahead of what we projected to be, and so that that's a good thing. And we've kept with our trend of trying to budget so that reasonable, um, but conservative. So uh, that continues and puts us in good shape with with sales tax. Yeah. Uh, real estate excise tax too is very strong another indicator of the current e economic climate that's out there I uh, see a lot of uh, transactions taking place people feel fairly confident I think probably all agree that we get that feeling economics being a social science I guess it is all about feeling <laughs> hard to believe but <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was more scientific. <laughs> <laughs> we can figure it out, but uh, we're the beneficiary. Of, Make sure uh, you're standing downwind. <laughs> <laughs> we're the beneficiary of good stuff now, so we're in good shape, uh, and that's what this indicates. So we're we're in good shape. Our other is our uh, cash and investment. Uh, to, in full disclosure to show the, what the, the various funds are. Uh, what we'll do, uh, some of this has to do with the uh, cash flow over the two years and where we're at with cash and the projects that are going to roll off. Uh, what we'll do at the end of uh, June is we'll go back and we'll put out an email to all the directors that says here's where you're at in the first quarter of a biennial budget. Uh, please go and look and see where you're ahead or behind and let finance know if there should be, uh, you know, what we would need to know on a cash flow basis and if there are any major changes to that as we end to, uh, enter into a mid-biennial review, which you'll start with in, uh, in September. But I'm not aware of anything major that's been uh, rearranged. Uh, any of those would really be Mark's and, and the mayor's uh, der determination on workflow and that type of thing. So they may have some things, but nothing that's come to finance to adjust the budget at this point. We will do a budget amendment, of course, on the 720 building. Uh, once that's closed out, we'll run a, a report and capture all that was uh, uh, expensed out there and, and bring that forward. And then there's some minor budget amendments as well. Uh, and so that might, uh, you know, will impact our cash position and that type of thing, at least not in a negative way. We'll just capture it as it moves forward. The build, building over there is coming primarily out of read, so. So if we, uh, you know, my, my pitch would be as we continue on this, the city's really set up to to do the to roll their projects off on that capital improvement plan, you know, as part of your, your comp plan, you know, and if you can, you know, match up what you've already decided to do with the various funds, water, sewer, uh, the parks project, and that type of thing. So to follow that plan, uh, you're going to be in good shape, matter back, back better than when we started the comp plan because revenue has been greater than what we would otherwise expect. Do you know what happened to Fund 103? Uh, uh, the justice worked out 75 grand. I think that might have been. I'll have to go back and look. Maybe some cars got paid out of that. Possibly the cars that were ordered at the end of the year for this year. Uh, I'll have to go back and look at that actually. But I'll, I'll send you. I'll send it maybe an email. But. But it looks like cars. Yeah. All right. Any questions? And I understand that Dave is going to be here at 8:15. So should we move to? 
Five point three. Three general ledger. What, what happened with state investment? We'll go to five point seven. You know. What we did is we moved uh, why it went up. <coughs> uh, we moved <coughs> money from uh, Kitsap Bank into the state investment pool because uh, interest earnings were about about 80 basis points, and almost a percent more than what uh, Kitsap Bank is going to give us. The other All right. Oh, there right there. So we left, I uh, talked to Kitsap Bank, uh, the CFO over there, and uh, you know what they could do to match the two pools, which are the Kitsap County pool and the, and the state investment pool. They really weren't in a position to, to pay, uh, to do more than what they were doing. They've got plenty of cash. Really, it was a decision, cash decision for yeah. them. So they came back and said they couldn't do it. And I said, well, and I know these guys. I, you know, I said, hey, I got to do what I got to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in the best interest of the city. So we moved that. Now, I didn't close the Kitsap Bank uh, money market account. Uh, we can go back to that. I left, I think, $25,000. I think it's a little bit more than 25000 That was what I, you know. I, you know so anyway, we left the account there, it's open, money could move back in there if it was a higher interest rate. So it was, it was all based on the interest earnings. You know, it's hard to leave $5 million when you can make a percent more on it. Right, yeah. absolutely. They're good guys, but... Yep. Okay. Howard, to be next. Am I up next? Yep, you're up next. Yep. Okay, great. Well, um, I was asked to come today to uh, speak on our um, diversity and inclusiveness in um, recruiting employees. And so what I did was I put together some demographic information um, on our um, city employees. So you can take a look at that. Um, and then <clears throat> I wanted to also put down some of the areas um, the focus on where I do um, advertise for job openings. Um, but I wanted to, uh, uh, and if you look on there, I just wanted to let you know, as far as our police department, um, we do have three female officers, and um, one of them has been a recent um, hire, so um, that I feel that if we can bring more women into the workforce here at the city, that's great. But um, I wanted to share something with you. Um, I sit on the Workforce Development Council as a board member, and I've been there for probably over 20 years. I worked, I sat on that board while I was at the um, Kitsap Housing Authority, and I continued to sit on that board um, at, here at the city as HR coordinator. Um, and that's part of the Olympic Consortium Development um, area, and that focuses on uh, workforce training and employment delivery. Um, systems within a three county area, Clallam and Jefferson and Kitsap. And um, I use WorkSource quite a bit because I feel that WorkSource really reaches out to our local population um, and I think it reaches a more diverse um, group of uh, job seekers. But I found it interesting because we uh, the plan was put together for the Workforce in Investment Act for this area. And uh, so I thought I would share that with you on race and ethnicity here in the most recent um, um, census data. And it says here, um, the most recent census data demonstrates that race and ethnicity makeup of the three county area is changing slowly. And it says, the local area population follows the same trend as in the state and the nation. A decrease in the proportion of the white population increase in the proportion of the non-white population. But it says here, in our area, the two groups, groups that are gaining the most in size relative to the whole are Hispanics and Asian Pacific Islanders. And um, it says, since the 1990 census, Hispanics have steadily increased in Kitsap County so that they are um, now uh, comprised of 6.8 of the population. And during the same period, Asian Americans gained in Kitsap from 4.4% to 4.9 of the population. Smaller but similar gains are noted in Clallam and Jefferson counties. But I found it very interesting because two of our most recent hires, we have a Hispanic gentleman that we just recently hired with Public Works. And um, one of our summer hires is a young gal that um, is of that 
um, uh, race, and uh, she's an Asian Pacific Islander, and also we have another hire in our planning department that is of that descent. So I feel that while we could always do better, I feel that at least we're, um, you know, looking at that uh, being inclusive. Um, but I also wanted to share that, you know, while we, you know, we're aware of that in our recruitment and when we, um, <clears throat> in our hiring, I think it's important that it's not only just posting jobs and, you know, hiring on like that, it's also how the city is viewed. And if we show that we're a city um, that is inclusive and if our employees and uh, management and leadership show that, you know, we um, we take it very seriously and that we wanted to be a diverse and inclusive city. That's part of it as far as attracting individuals here at the city. So um, I just wanted to share that and um, if you have any questions. I think this was brought forward because just before our last meeting I had an email from a constituent okay. who was um, questioning the lack of diversity in our hiring practices. Okay. So I just came in and said, I'm assuming because we're union, that we follow everything that we're supposed to, yes. and, and Alan said he'd bring you in. So sure. I really appreciate you following up. Sure. And I think what another area that I we could always do better in is also our disabled population. And I think that as long as, um, you know, they have to meet the essential job functions, but I think that that's an area that probably we could do better in. But, um, but we do, and then, you know, when we do, um, uh, when we do our interviewing, a lot of times, um, sometimes we'll put um, paper down, you know, in front of an individual with the questions. You know, so we're aware of certain things in our interview process if, in, if there was a request an accommodation through that too. We do that. So. Good job. Yeah. Okay. Looks good. Yep. One sidebar too. I, I today I will take some time and work on Tuck's counseling memorandum. The what? Tuck. He has. He's, he needs to be counseled. <gasps> oh, Tuck. Yeah. Okay. He tried to lay claim to Tuck's her dog. Came in and tried to lay claim to my office on Friday. Like <laughs> <laughs> his leg on the corner of my desk. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, well, because Oscar was well, here. Well, Oscar was here. You know, Oscar and he were, wanted to show they were he playing was the head and dog, he came not in and Oscar. Sniffed but. off Oscar's bed and then turned around and hiked his leg on my desk. So, yes. Bad, Bad dog. I, had, I did talk to him a lot. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Because yes. I had to wait. Sure. Sure. Okay. Oh, and I don't know if you if you were interested, you could have this um, a little bit of summary. Oh, I can't. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Deborah, yeah, you do a wonderful job. Yes. yes. Thanks, Alan. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, shall we move into public works since it's not arrived yet? They hasn't shown up yet. And we're moving right along. Yeah. I think the only item I have is mm -hmm. the water system plan, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we had budgeted initially funding in the budget to to do an update to the water system plan. We had, we had done the major plan in 15 um, with all the other system plans. But the, the changes to the well 10, 13, and now the well 12 were actually required to uh, especially with the you know, water rights work we're doing with all that uh, wellhead protection. There's a lot of dominoes that tumble out of that. So we're having to, uh, I guess, have a much more robust plan update than we had originally intended. So uh, in talking with the water system manager, we feel like we can manage within the budget authority of the water system just um, not do as much uh, pipe replacement. Um, we really think that this is a, a high priority, and so we'll be looking at uh, taking some of the, uh, I think it would be 250 uh, feet of water, water replacement. I can't remember what the budget amount is. Uh, but 
but taking some of that, and I don't know if Thomas had it in his memory. Mm -hmm. From 250 to 205. Yeah, right. So that we'll transfer money, and I guess we'll do that as a budget amendment, Alan, even though it's just on a child line. Or no, you don't. This, if, if you do, if you do the do the change here that you're talking about, mm -hmm. the mechanics of the budget will still remain in place. Okay. Yeah. So it's just that you're only spending the money once mm -hmm. rather than twice. Yeah. You're spending it on something. We just we, we've got two new wells. We've got a plan, but we've got these two new wells, and we got to be able to draw the water from those sources. So we need an updated plan so that we don't get sideways with anybody from the regulatory standpoint. Right. The so last thing we want to do is go to all this effort drilling these wells and someone say, no, you can't draw yeah. from there. Yeah, your, your plan doesn't map, so. And then, go, you know, in the future, we'll bring forward, once this, what we talked about at the utility committee, um, <coughs> we've got money in the budget to rebuild the two pump stations out of McCormick Woods, uh, sewer lift stations. Um, it appears that the McCormick Partners folks are going to rebuild those for us, but that agreement isn't done. Once that agreement is done, then it makes then we'll have some planning dollars and, and design dollars. Uh, we'll most likely will bring a budget. Well, I don't know if it will be a budget, it's the same dollars we think for about that same money we can get the design done on the Marina pump station down here. Uh, we got so, so, we some of these budget amendments in these cases is if you're transferring between funds. Yeah, and this isn't the case. It's just we're, we're instead of doing what well, we called out on the budget well, is one plan. Well, well, the, the one, the one that's in front of us today does have a transfer. Right. Uh, okay. But if he only spends the money once, that transfer is still in place. Right. And we talked about this at, at the finance department. If the council finance committee approves the line item change, we'll just change the line item, and there's no, there's nothing to come before council that legally has to be changed. Right. But we did want to <coughs> document it someplace because we don't want to end up, you know, in 18 months. Uh, so not this knowing what right. we did. This water system plan was ready to be brought before you. The other one, until they, we execute that um, uh, agreement. The, the agreement between the two parties. It's premature to bring the other one forward. The other one, <clears throat> the one on the west side of town. How do we reimburse them for that? We're still working through that. It, okay. Connection fees and capital facility charges. Right. And so that's what we're that's, working. That's what we're working. That's through. the negotiation. Okay. Yes, exactly. And the marina pump station, you know, we do have a pre-design, but we need to get it to a final design to help us. We were actually, we actually had been awarded two million on that project, and then the funding through the hazard mitigation grant program had. It went away in the last moment. So we were actually in the money on that, unfortunately. So we think that getting it to final design, um, and because it scored well, uh, we feel pretty confident that we can parlay that final design into an actual grant. So that's where we want to go right now. We've got the money in the utility fund. We were going to spend it on a different design, but they do build that for us, then we'll, we'll free up some dollars. So was this money to replace the pipes anticipated to use a contractor for, or were we going to do it in-house? The money that was in the budget? What we're taking yeah, money for, from. For the, right. Well, and I guess that's another thing, too, is we have, you know, in the past, the city relied heavily on local contractors to do a lot of the small work, and now that we have uh, more qualified people we're doing a lot of that ourselves mm -hmm. in fact our last hire is just to compliment to uh, so we have Joe who's an experienced uh, trench guy and the trench guy actually runs the job you know they're not just in the hole they're actually running things so the operator is focusing on their their job and so Chris is a competent operator so you know the, the reality of it is is I think we're going to get as much done as we normally would because we're going to be doing it in-house. So it's really freeing up some of that. You know, uh, it's going to require us to rent machinery that we don't own, and, and, and Thomas is pushing on, well, we need to own this piece of machinery, and maybe at some point we do, but you know, with that expensive piece of machinery becomes 
the need for a trailer to tow that piece of machinery with, and then you don't buy a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar piece of machinery and not have some place to put it inside where it's warm and dry. So, um, yeah, the issue we're running into is just that the the mini X really is was bought from for storm drainage to be used for storm drainage, and it is used you know seasonally, but it gets used year round now uh, with other things. So. We definitely want to move in that direction um, because in that, at the end of the day, the util the other utilities are renting it from the storm drainage utility and tracking that time in those hours. So there's just a difference between cash and cash flow, though. Yeah, you know, cash flow we can pay for rentals and go buy a piece of equipment that really takes cash. So that, that's a conversation down the road. Right now, it's get going on the water system plan. Ultimately, when the permit agreement comes to fruition come forth with that and, and you know I see no reason why that won't be successful and then we'll move to get ourselves in a better position the arena pump station and then we can deal with the equipment purchase at a later date okay. right. anybody have a problem yeah no I don't have a problem <laughs> with it and it sounds with our new hire that we may be able to execute within almost the same amount of um, mm -hmm. results that we would have before. So I'm fine with that. So it's a unanimous yeah. agreement. Yeah, that's fine. And I, I just have to, I sat in on the interviews when we hired for that position and I was very, very impressed with the gentleman that we hired, the trench guy. Yeah. Was he talking about being in a 21 foot, yeah, I couldn't believe that, 21 foot ditch with water flowing yeah. through yeah. it <laughs> and you know this emergency situation and he you know he had to take care of it and he's i was just amazed that um, you know with his skill set and his knowledge that he brought it's like somebody had to do it yeah that's what he said somebody had to do it yeah we've been hiring some very very talented people So, you, you get your sheepish look. We need to talk about Tremont, but we can do that after the meeting. Or? Well, I think that we've got time now. I was going to say we've got 20 minutes before. We still don't have. We'll have yeah, I mean, do you want to make it a part of this meeting record, or it's not part of the agenda here? We can. You call a we recess. We can have a recess. No, 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 no. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just wait until <laughs> Dave, then we'll get when we'll start when Dave gets here. We are. We do. Okay. It's a button we're, thing. We're back. And you can join us at the table. Mr. Sir, you're welcome to. So we have uh, Dave Preggis, sir, from uh, D.A. Davidson, a senior investment banker in the state of Washington. Near retirement. No. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for uh, making the trip over from Bainbridge Island. Thank you, yeah. Master Treasurer. And we've been doing quite a bit of work, uh, heavy lifting here the last couple weeks, especially last week. We have. Thanks to you and your staff for all that good information. So, so with that, uh, we were just discussing, uh, we're set up to go to the market. Uh, there's actually in your packet a, a calendar that we've uh, kept to that would show that uh, if we had the situation, uh, which we're going to discuss uh, here, uh, Mark, Mark's going to talk a little bit about the situation, possibly on the timing of the bond uh, sale. Um, but anyway, this, the, the schedule to have is receiving the money in August um, <coughs> for the sale at the, and a closing at the first of August. Yep. So maybe you can talk about those things, Dave, the market, where we're at. Uh, we've got two different terms we've discussed. Right. Uh, those type of things and just give us the big picture of what, we're, what we need to know. Here. Thank you, Alan. Okay, um, up for consideration tomorrow is the delegation bond ordinance, which has been prepared by Al Sostek, your bond counsel. And in that ordinance, which is a standard delegation ordinance, which would delegate the final authority to the mayor and Alan to, for all the terms and conditions of the bonds. 
And as he mentioned, our current schedule is to price the bonds later in July and close the issue the 1st of August. In the delegation ordinance, um, it provides two alternatives for the sale of the bonds. One is a traditional public offering of the bonds, which this schedule allows. The other is that if you consider um, um, moving up the final maturity of the bonds to 15 years, we had looked at 20 years and 15 years, and those numbers are in your, you're in your packet. But if you did consider going to 15 years, it also opens up the opportunity for um, a potential private placement of the bonds, direct purchase by a sophisticated financial institution. Those folks will consider buying those bonds directly and holding them in their inventory. And if that takes place, that would reduce some of the um, cost of issuance and make the issue simpler and, and quicker. Um, we would then do, we would do a uh, request for indicative rates and just see how those uh, would come in and see if it's cost effective compared to a public sale of the bonds. So that option is in the ordinance, that flexibility is in the ordinance, and, uh, and Alan and I would coordinate about that timing and process. Um, the key parts of the ordinance, you're authorizing no more than $6 million of bonds. We're going to deposit $5.8 million to the project fund uh, at closing and then pay cost of issuance. We expect the par amount to be less than $6 million based on the pricing of the bonds. The key points that you're delegating are in Exhibit A of the ordinance, and those, are ma and those key things are the bond issue can't be more than $6 million. The true interest cost of the bonds, which is kind of a blended rate of the bonds, can't be more than 4.5%, and the final maturity of the bonds can be no later than 12-1 of 37, which is a little more than 20 years. Um, other terms and conditions are delegated to the mayor and the treasurer, like redemption features, how you'll pay them back ahead of schedule, and some other terms and conditions. Um, we uh, think on a, on a, a question on a ten on a fifteen year. Do we still have a ten year call provision? If it's done in the public markets, most likely yes. But in a private placement. To be market, negotiated. To be negotiated. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you can do a little lower. Oh, and they would entertain. Maybe. It. Okay. They, yeah, maybe so eight year might, eight year par call maybe. The city might benefit by that if in <laughs> fact they're rolling. They, they have the other large project. Uh, Bethel in front of us, and that might be give them some flexibility to, you know, right. roll it into a new issuance or pay it off early to, right. yeah. Yeah, we can set up the re request and ask them to provide uh, proposals and see if they okay. consider doing that. Um, Following. The, the true interest cost maximum that's in the resolution, and it also gives you more than a year to complete the issue, although we're going to obviously try to get it done in the next double, couple months. The 4.5% maximum true interest cost is a very conservative number. If, uh, based on what we think your underlying credit rating is, in today's market for a 15-year financing, you're less than 3%. Um, so um, we think that uh, we're on track. And I'd be glad to answer any questions about it. The numbers that are in the, your packet were run last week, um, and they compared the 15 to the 20 year. And you can see the, the lower payments for the 20, but the uh, ability to pay it off five years earlier. And we had actually, Dave had taken what we originally thought we had in a payment, uh, our original projection of a payment based on uh, our early work. Uh, which was at eight point three million the higher dollars, amount, right. right? So he backed into the old algebra formula and backed into uh, what would that payment buy you, and it was a twelve-year term, right? So if we'd have taken oh, on the otherwise okay. mm -hmm. was planning okay. on paying, we'd have would have got it down to a twelve-year. Well, you're kind of in a uh, so, but so we went back and we looked at fifteen years and and said that, you know we would still have a reduced payment. Uh, with 15 years and still mm -hmm. this flexibility to get to a private, do you still call it a private placement? Yeah, a direct purchase, private direct placement. Purchase, yeah. So, yeah. So, so it's when our cash flow budget and we save $750,000 over the term right. of the bond. Yeah. yeah. Now the interest rate is uh, a little lower as well, in addition to paying it off further, because 
we move up what we call the yield curve because bondholders know they're getting paid back sooner, they're willing to let a slightly lower interest rate right. because of that, of your commitment to pay it off on that schedule. So that would be our, you know, that, that looks, you know, under the circumstances that this was looked at last week, 15 years gives you quite a bit of flexibility that we didn't believe that we would have when we started this. So if hopefully that will continue to hold and when we get out there, if we get those type of uh, bids, if you will, right, um, then, then it might make the best sense for us financially. Um, there is one uh, issue if you do decide to go to the 15 based on the schedule you know we are planning to have a what we call a due diligence call a rating prep call uh, this Wednesday and then a call with Ben gear at, at the rating agency on Thursday so if 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 we reasonably expect to want to do a what we call the request for indicative rates we may want to think about changing that schedule unless you want to really want to go down direct parallel tracks because we wouldn't want to commit to the having go to rating committee and then you guys be charged a rating fee if we wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily need that for the direct purchase oh if you do a direct placement you don't right. have to have the rating. yeah even though you don't have an outstanding rating many of the direct purchasers will do their own credit analysis and make an internal rating and so we wouldn't necessarily need that although some may ask for one too so we have that little question mark out right. there because and when they ask for it you just factor in what's their rate that they're offering and if you pay for it what's that true interest cost what's that cost of true what's TIC that what's that cost to get that rating it's about for for your deal i think it's like nine thousand dollars yes yeah, so. ten thousand dollars something like that dave if we did it direct i, I know we for you guys we're working with dave for the bond issue that we're doing in transit on a direct purchase, you would have to have the third party come in and evaluate the the numbers. Is that going to be applicable here as well? You know, I don't. I mean, that's your call if you want to have another party. But I, we go through it, and uh, you know, based on the responses, it's pretty self-evident whether. What's the norm for public agencies doing it? For smaller issues like that, the norm is to not necessarily. Okay. Have it. If we were, if I was. You know, with you over there with 50 million, then I, I think you should have. Uh, yeah, well, we're planning on it, and I just didn't right. know if I, it was I, still applicable on right. a smaller. Right, and I had talked to uh, you know your folks over there, and, and I, I would I wouldn't feel comfortable doing this as a finance person at 50 million dollars on just uh, you know. Dave's a nice guy. Yeah, but looking at, you're looking at the, at an index and saying yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. But here we're we're down to a, a level. I think there's enough of those deals out there that you're going to be able to look around and see what other people got. So there's you, you, fifty million. You're getting into the you know like a different game. We what, what's the thought on moving forward with getting a rating, even though we may not need it? at the cost of $10,000. Do we wait? Do we want to wait on the rating? How long is the rating well, process? Well, let, let, we can, we can well, well, when we get out there, I think that the circumstances prevailing will pretty much put you in a position whether... To say, do it or not. Yeah, let's say Brand X says, comes along and says, hey, we're going to give you this price for your bonds, mm -hmm. but we want a rating, okay. and we'll have to make a decision, uh, do we want to buy the rating or not? Right. How long if, if does it take that to want complete it, we the rating? Get. Well, you know, if here's the thing. I, I, I have an obligation to check in with Ben before the rating call. If we have a reasonable expectation, we may not want him to go to committee because he has an obligation once we talk with him to make it make, start down the path with his rating committee and set it up and that type of thing. So we can have maybe a discussion with him, but I need to tell him probably no later than Wednesday that uh, we will be kind of either going down parallel tracks or we may want to have a call with him but not go to rating committee because what will happen is that he'll go to his rating committee within about a week of our call and then the rating would be released no later than a week after that. Okay, so it's a two, two weeks. Well, this is, there's a, we, we need to discuss the fact that 
we may not award the uh, contract Tuesday night. Oh, okay. So, uh, so we we're in a situation here where we may uh, say that we need to step back from okay. where we're at right now and look at this probably in the middle of July. Oh, okay. So, so maybe maybe it makes sense to, for me to talk with Ben and say let's probably delay. Right. The call. So we'll know later today whether or not that's going to be the fact case. So if if that is the case, what we'll do is we'll step back redo this calendar that's in front of us yeah. ask you and Alice to just go and be with your families on Tuesday night and and then we'll go to a okay. plan B uh, but that's the information we just learned this morning at 7 7 7 11 but I if I said that you think the seven we get a slurp <laughs> yeah <laughs> 7 10 so anyway but what else can you tell us about the market it's strong uh, <laughs> That's yeah. a common. I, you say that all the time. Right? Well, <laughs> he's <laughs> bullish. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, you know, like uh, like five months ago. But you know what happened is, as you know, we hit forty-year lows in our market a year ago, and uh, then after the election, rates went up in anticipation of with the new federal administration more, you know, favorable taxes and economic growth and that type of thing. Well. In the last couple months, there's been the realization that a lot of those things are not going to come to fruition, and then the federal, and then, then the national and, and economic environment isn't as robust as it was. So rates have come down, and there's just been a ton of local deals that have been priced, and we're still now not far from where we were a year ago at the 40-year lows. And so when you're looking at, you know, a interest cost of less than three percent for a 15-year financing. Um, I think it's pretty attractive, especially historically. So, yeah. so does anybody want to read the bond ordinance? I can send you the draft. It's the delegation. It's in the packet, isn't it? No, it's not the packet. Yeah. And we also it's have for your nighttime reading. Oh, it's in the pack. Oh, it's in the packet. It's in the, the packet yeah. that you guys have. Yeah, right? I have it. So you might want to take a look at that. And then the other thing is. Did you want uh, John raise the issue of having someone do a uh, you know, price and analysis? Uh, are we comfortable on saying you know if we remain in this price range that, that the city for, could go that? I'm fine with it personally. Okay, that's a consensus. So I'd also you know also we've prepared this document with. Which is the disclosure document for bond investors. If we go down the, the public sale option, uh, we wouldn't be preparing this for the direct purchasers because this is this makes it a, uh, a security because of then it's priced to the market. <coughs> so there's a lot of good information in here about the city and the pledge and the revenues to pay the bonds back. And um, mayor's a swell guy. So mayor's a swell guy and the this document. Uh, uh, essentially approves it. So uh, if you have any interest in taking a look, see it's it's all right there. Those are your two Do we sources. have access to that? Uh, I'll I'll send it to you. The okay. most it, and it's still a working draft. Yeah, right. No, because I I brought that one before, but make sure I uh, get the most recent one and I'll send it out to okay. the committee. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, get when it. I get back, I'll be back in the office by noon today, so I'll send it. That'd be perfect. Crystal's most recent. Because she would, had changed that one. We did. I, yeah, I can't remember. She, I think she sent that out late last week. But anyway. So, so any that, questions about the numbers or the process or anything else? We're trying to get what I've been working with, and I think uh, is to give the city the max, you know, the best price, uh, but the maximum flex as well, That's the maximum support. less mm -hmm. flexibility yeah. to uh, allow yourself to. Cover as much as you can here as broadly as you can. And the size of the issue makes a direct placement not difficult. More attractive. More attractive. Because a couple of things. One, not just the 15 year final maturity, and we have and, and we have to stay kind of the market says, look, no more than 15 years from the closing date, plus your average life of the bonds has to be less than 10 years. 
based on how you pay it back, and you're within that. But also, you're a small issuer under the tax code. You're issuing less than $10 million of bonds, and so this issue is, quote, bank qualified under the federal tax rules, which makes it more attractive for financial institutions. They get to deduct 80% uh, of the cost of carrying these bonds on their books. And so community banks, like Kitsap Bank, <laughs> right, right around here, Kitsap Bank, um, JP Morgan, other banks have more an incentive to consider a direct purchase because it's um, by them purchasing it and, and agreeing to put it on their books and not resell the bonds right. because that's they're agreeing to sign a sophisticated investor letter and not resell the bonds, make their securities they have more of an incentive to do so. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's going to be close. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do it as a direct purchase, that means you also, in addition to not having the rating fee, you don't have the continuing disclosure obligations under the federal, which is the yearly um, right. filing of documents for to a repository where bond investors have a chance to check that out. And so there's some administrative things. You know, efficiencies of doing that as well. I did uh, ask though on uh, is to have it paid through the state fiscal agent though. Oh, okay. uh, if you do a private placement, you can set up a payment uh, situation different between you and the the holder. But I, I think it's just because of the size of the city and the sophistication of the city. I think it'd be better to go through the state fiscal agent. You pay a little bit for that, but they'll pick up the payments and make the two payments. Uh, just take it out of your bank account. I just feel more comfortable with that under the situation that we have. It's very inexpensive. It is it even don't. for them to act as it's a couple fiscal hundred bucks. What yeah. is it now? Yeah. Three hundred and fifty a year or something. It's it's not enough to move the needle. But they they keep it on their books. You get the payment schedule. They take the money. They they catch it, and, and, and it gives you a different way to track it. There's a third party involved, and I just think that that would be be better for us. I would assume with the smaller uh, issuance like this, you would have a greater potential for more private investors. Uh, right. <coughs> you know, it compared to Kitsap Transit. You know, to make those right. numbers no, work. I'm, I'm just assuming that, you know, something that's seven million, there's more banks out there yes, that would right look at putting point. that kind of a, right. a commitment into their portfolio as right. opposed to a right. and then, fifty million right. in our case. And, right. and the benefit <coughs> and the bank qualified that the, you get you get a benefit from that because they're gonna give the lower rate. You right. should get a margin of that. That's that's why they can be competitive otherwise. Well, and you get the savings too with the issuance, so that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's good. These local banks are sitting on piles of cash, um, and that's why yeah. you're getting nothing on your your savings and money market rate. Yeah, but it still ties up cash yeah, it does, for a lot does of years. So, but our number is yeah different is than yours. Yeah, yeah, it's it's ten just, times less. It's right. easier for them to tie up this amount versus a larger amount. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get to some big institutions, I think. Yeah, so, so if I get direction in that regard, then I need to draft a little uh, request for indicative rights and, uh, you know, get that out circulated to all these potential folks and have them respond, give them like, I need to give them like 10 days to respond and then some time for us to evaluate it and like, so we'd have to rewrite the schedule and well, we're, I'll just wait to hear back from you later. Yeah, we're, we're, we're back, we're yeah. back, yeah, we're, we've got to drop back here, so. More to come tomorrow. Okay, so is the sense that the, um, based on the uncertainty of the, the first bidder and versus the second bidder, and you're just going through the... State right. has an issue with the second bidder now. Oh. Okay, okay. so we're waiting. It's pretty much Trying somebody else. Trying to get Okay. So that's what... No worries. I mean, the market is, you know, I don't expect the market to be moving against you uh, this summer. Um, nobody can guarantee the market, but... All indications are that it, it's going to stay this attractive for the near term. Even with that time frame, we're only looking at maybe changing 30 days at the most. Well, not necessarily. If we have to throw the whole thing. Oh, if we have to throw it out. 40, to bid. 45. Yeah. yeah. I, I think what you the takeaway here is everything's in the box and ready to go. Right? Yeah. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah, we're all queued up. Ready right? to pull the curve. Yeah. Right. So yeah. this is just. Uh, 
having it on the they're ready to go. And, and, uh, yeah. um, no, I think could we, could we do the delegation uh, tomorrow night even without? You betcha. Because the well, the, unless the unless, unless the paramount, you're not yeah, comfortable we, with the paramount. Nah, we better not. No, because the not. six million uh, member. I don't want to write, raise it. Up. Okay. No, we don't okay. do it twice. No, no, no. Because no. something no, changed. No, I, I, I forgot. But that. I think we are interested in taking a look at the um, the direct placement. Aren't we the fifteen? Yeah, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, there's there's a potential for. Noticeable savings. Oh yeah, it, and efficiencies. It's yeah. just yeah. So we're we're set up with the maximum flexibility. So yeah. whatever the market does, whatever it does, when we get to that number, we'll be able to borrow the money. It's just to make sure we do it the most cost effective way. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, everybody. Good coming on. Good seeing you again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll give you a call this afternoon. I'll okay. Yeah. I'll send it to you. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else for the uh, agenda? Set, set next, set, set, set the next deal. Yep. We're uh, out of town the week of the 24th, the uh, first part of the week. So, so if we go earlier, we won't get we'll the sales tax numbers. Yeah. This is what we want to wait to have sales tax number or have a, is there a need to have a meeting sooner versus later, Alan? No. Okay. We want about 30% interest. Yeah, it's significant. About July well. 31st. Yeah. If we want to do a Monday. That's a no-brainer. Yeah. yeah, is, is Monday a good day or? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. What are you Alan, looking at? Is it not a good day for you? Oh, what day? The Monday the 31st. Monday the 30th or July 3rd. My day. only caveat is I'm on jury duty that week, so I may have to get up and leave this early. <laughs> so I don't think they call the jury in at 7 30 in the morning. J July 31st? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm good. That work? John, you're. Yeah. You can say no. We can find yeah. it for a day. John's already got a jury duty. I'd prefer if we could find another day. Okay, let's do How it. How about the latter part of the week of the 24th? Say like yeah. the 27th or 28th. It's not a Monday, obviously, but 27th looks good for me. 27th is not good for me. It is not. Okay. The 28th. 26th bad, the day after council meeting? Um, we're still in Chicago. Yeah. Friday, 28th? Friday the 28th, 28th is work. open. I could do that in the morning. I know that I have something on my schedule the 27th and 28th, but right now I, the 27th I know is in the morning, the 28th I'm not remembering. But we could, we could put that down and then, because my commitment may be in the afternoon. Okay, so start now on the 28th, 7 30. I'll be there. Alrighty. Thank you very much. Thank you.